You have questions? America's number one business coach has answers. It's your Broda from Minnesota. Here's another edition of Ask Clay Anything on the Thrive Time Business Coach Radio Show. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Ask Me Anything. And on today's show, we are joined with Tulsa's number one CPA in every way, a man who's always looking good, Mr. Paul Hood. Sir, how are you? I am great, Clay. I, I tell you, the holidays, uh, Thanksgiving came, ate too much, loved it, watched some football, now ready to get back to business. I have a, a confession for you guys. Before we, we before we start talking about mystery shopping your competition, I... Uh, Every, every time there's a Thanksgiving, what we do is uh, we, we have a meal. You know, the, my mom or mother-in-law or, or my wife, they're, they're making food. We'll have family over. And it doesn't matter. It does, it does not matter uh, the variables surrounding the game. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a huge Patriots fan. And so I think, you know what, I'm going to mystery shop the other team. I'm going to watch the Cowboys or the Lions. You know, Ooh. I'm going to watch them, see what's going on, do my research. And it doesn't matter. It 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 does it, it never. It doesn't matter if, I, if I'm if I'm cold, if I'm outside, if I'm inside, if I've had a lot to eat, if I didn't have anything to eat. Like this year, I didn't really eat that much. I immediately fall asleep as soon as the lions come on. Mm. I can't stand the lions. I don't know what it is. It's like a it's like a, a cure for you know insomnia for me. Well, back in the day when when uh, my man, my boy. Uh, the stud Barry Sanders played. Uh, right, you didn't fall asleep. No, he, you he, didn't. He, no, him by himself carried the game. He was great, but now I mean, I, 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 I mean, I was excited to watch Mike Posner sing the halftime show, and my wife had to wake me up for it. <laughs> I just passed out. I mean, every every single time, it's like as soon as they do the kickoff, I immediately go into like a polar bear hibernation, narcoleptic sort of. football watching experience. So I, I don't think that counts as scouting your competition or. Well, I, tr- I try I to, so. but I find it infinitely boring. Fail. And I think somebody out there can relate to this, though. You're out there saying, okay, I need to mystery shop my competition, but I find it to be boring. I don't like it. I don't see the point in it. So, Chuck, the entire show today is about why we should mystery shop, how we should mystery shop, and what's the point of mystery shopping. So, first off, why should we mystery shop? Jason, let's go with uh, coffee shops for 5,000 points. Cool. Mm. You're wearing a double shot hat this morning? Correct. Oh, yeah. Talk to me about why you're wearing a double shot coffee hat. I like the way it looks. It's comfortable. And I like their coffee. Do you really? I do. Why? I like my coffee to be a certain flavor. And they are one of the few places in Tulsa that actually hit the nail on the head with that one. What, what is, can you please try to describe the flavor it's of the brown water that you like. Earthy yeah. tone. It's a- well, with like most coffees, a lot of coffees now are like instant, so they taste. It's like stale, hot bean water. Bitter. But with uh, the double shot, it has like a nice like aroma and flavor to it. It's like trying to describe wine, which I'm terrible at. Mm. But um, I don't know. It's just got this like nuttiness and richness to it that I don't find with a lot of other coffees. Hmm. You went to culinary school, correct? Yes. Okay, so so we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that we believe what you're saying. <laughs> okay, and now, have you been to other coffee shops? Oh, yeah. So if you were going to give other coffee shops advice on how they could earn your business as it relates to the coffee, what advice would you give them? Um, I would definitely say it starts with your people up front. Anytime I walk into Double Shot, like even if I haven't been there in a couple of weeks, going there without my hat, without my elephant shirt, they're always just like, oh, Jason, it's good to see you. How are you doing? So just like being hospitable. To your people, not just treating them as just like a one-time transaction. Um, care about the product mm. that you provide. Like, don't just provide something to make a profit. Like, own what you are providing, and then make sure it's great every time. Passion. Okay, mm. Paul. Think about a business that you really uh, like, a place that you shop at. It could be Starbucks or Harley Davidson or Whole Foods. Or th- think about a product that you really like or a service that you really like. Can you can you think of one that? W- Share with us maybe a product that you're passionate about or a service. Absolutely, Clay. Uh, well, and, and what people don't understand is business is war. Business, if, if your competitor gets a dollar, that's a dollar you don't get. Mm. And you can't be passive and you can't be, oh, that's just not nice or whatever. you got to find out what's working and what's not working. And the quickest way to do it is to go shop your competition. Uh, for instance, yeah, I love it. You know, and we interviewed our guy, and he'll be here in December. 
Um, uh, Ken Schmidt. Schmidt. Yeah. Ken Schmidt, yeah. That, uh, I love Harley Davidson. You walk into a Harley Davidson store, and you know, and I'm not a big man. I'm 5'9, but you feel like you're eight foot tall. You're a man. You want to put on leather. And Smells you like leather and was, oil yeah, and yeah, exhaust. Just sound and, <laughs> yeah, you can't walk in there with flip flops. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work. You gotta, they kick you out. <laughs> they kick you out. You feel like a real man. And, and they've, they've, they've spent the time to create this, this branding. That, that you know you walk into me and I'm not bad mouthing other motorcycles you know they're they're a cheaper brand but you just don't get the same feeling for walking in and if I was the owner of these other motorcycle shops I would be shopping at I would be secret shopping you know Harley Davidson what makes it the sounds the the lighting the people that work there the the product that's in that's in that store because I would want to give that feeling because it's the feeling that you get and that's why people buy Harley Davidson what are some of the things that go into that feeling at the Harley Davidson dealership can you describe how it's decorated or how it smells or how the employees are dressed or walk mm-hmm. us through that for people who have who, who have never been to a Harley Davidson uh, a store, a dealership. Can you explain what that looks like? Yeah, yeah, Clay. Have you ever watched the movie Wild Hogs or any you know any of those kind of shows? It's it's these old guys and and they got leather on and and they just you know during the day they're they're accountants or they're you know they're maybe radio show hosts that people don't see them. But you walk into a Harley store and you see leather and you see big shiny engines the engines are bigger and wider than, I'm gonna than the up bikes the, i'm gonna cue up the music that i think they play in harley davidson uh-huh. oh. and you tell me if i'm correct or not all right here we go <laughs> the in- oh, internal yeah. dialogue is uh, sexy yeah. absolutely welcome into harley davidson you got you the, in leather, the right spot leather chaps everything on <laughs> okay. you got them is that the right kind of ambiance or am i, I off I think you're off a little bit. Okay. <laughs> One of the other things they do at, at every Harley store I've been in is they uh, have just so many motorcycles. They do. Everywhere. There's so many motorcycles. You can see them all. You can sit on them, and you just – then they talk about their financing options. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you walk in, and, it, and it's almost like you're, you're also uh, not a bar, but, you know, they've got – uh, uh, the the sales people, the ladies are walking around, and the guys have you know sleeveless shirts and oh man, yeah, and the the ladies have on black and headbands, yeah, bandanas, right. and it's just you feel t- there you go, that's a little closer. <laughs> oh yeah, is this more of the Harley vibe? Wow. I think so. Wow. 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 Chip, does a Harley Davidson appeal to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you okay. driven one before? Yeah, I rode one over here one time. Remember? You know what I'm talking about. Is it a Harley? Yeah, it's a Harley. Come on, Clay. Clay, Clay I tell you, they don't sell <laughs> they don't sell pinion woods and kitty cats at Harley Davidson. Sorry, mm, shots mm. fired. Mm. No. Okay. okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, hey. but this is what I, this is what I'm talking about, though. You guys are clearly aware of the Harley Davidson ambiance experience. Absolutely. Experience. Jason's clearly aware of the experience and ambiance of the coffee place. But most business owners have no idea about the other guys. They have that's no right. idea what they're None. competing with. It is bizarre. That's I have an action step for all the listeners out there, and that's the first thing you need to do is make a list of who the goats are, the greatest of all time, and you need to consider them your competition and find out what they're doing and one up them at every turn. So I'm going to walk you through this. I want to walk all the listeners through this, and it's so important you take and you write all down all these action steps. Okay, one, do exactly what Eric said. Write down who your top competitors are today. Write down their names. Well, there's no competitors. The only competition I have is in my it's in myself. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> now, let me explain the only time that that logic is true. Um, John Wooden is the famous basketball coach who won 10 NCAA championships while being the head coach of UC, uh, UCLA. 10 out of 12, and he never watched game film. And I'll explain to you why. Because the other team could only have five players on the court at any given time, and they couldn't adjust the length of the game or shorten it. So he knew the variables were somewhat limited. So his whole thing was, I'm going to obsess about our team being the best that we can possibly be, because knowing what the other guy is, what the other team is going to do, really won't impact. His, it, this, was, this was his philosophy. It really won't impact our team's ability to play or not. So he would objectively look at his team and figure out what his team's strengths were, and he wanted to make those the best they could be. So he had years he won an NCAA championship where he had a very short lineup, but he decided to go ahead and build a team and a, a system around being very fast, very fast-break fast break driven, 
Other years he had legendary centers like like uh, Bill Walton was on the team, and he built around him. But the point is, he knew what he had, and because he played every week for years, for decades, he was uh, coaching players every week for years, he pretty much knew that he had the top recruits in America because he knew who he wanted, and he went after him. So he's going, okay, I know what I have. I know the guys you have. I've already scouted all the players before they were on your roster, so I really don't need to see what they can do now because I was trying to recruit them or not trying to recruit them. Thank you. But, Mo, you can't do that with your business because in business there's so many variables. But, Clay, I'll tell you, what you the, the key here and the purpose of this is you've got to be flexible in your business. You've got to be you, – you figure out – you, what you want to accomplish, you set your goals, you execute your plan, you measure your results, which we talk on this show constantly that the key is is what most people don't do in their personal life and their business life is measure the results. The reason you measure your results is, is so you can change your path, so you can adjust. I'll give you a good real quick story. Um, you know, I'm an o- Oklahoma State fan. I graduated from Oklahoma State. All three of my boys have too. And we played West Virginia not too long ago. And West Virginia was picked to beat us. We haven't had a very good year. In the first half, they were up by 18 points, I believe. And Gundy, after the game, and then at the, by the end of the game, we won. Well, the story was, what, what did you change in the second half, coach? And he said, basically, we scouted them. We put a game plan together. And in the first half, they completely, West Virginia completely did the opposite of what they've done all year long. So the game plan didn't work. But because they had scouted them and they were, had prepared, he knew that it wasn't working because they were doing something different. And so he was able to modify his plan, change to exactly what they were doing at halftime, and we came out and, and beat West Virginia. And so the, the key principle here is be flexible and, and to know in, in war and in battle and whether you're chasing that girl to try to get her to go out with you, if you're trying to create wealth, you're trying to build a business, you've got to be flexible and you've got to be very, very intentional. And to be intentional to beat the next guy is you have to secretly shop them. When you secretly, when you do a mystery shop, what I want you to do now, now that we've written down our comp, our competitors, I want you to pay somebody to go buy something from them. Pay somebody to go buy something from them. I cannot even begin to count the number of weddings that I have paid for, for a bride and groom to use my competition. I have literally told a couple, hey, we're looking for a mystery shopper. And uh, I would be honored if you would allow me to pay for you to book with my competition and then just give me feedback about what they did well and what we could do better. It's so effective, but people won't do it unless you pay them. This is why the top companies in the world all pay mystery shoppers. Huge companies are paying for the services of mystery shoppers. This is a real thing. This is a real gig. This is a real job. You need to do that, okay? So you're paying a mystery shopper. Step three, make a list of variables related to the business. Make a list of variables related to the business. And objectively, score yourself as either you are better than those guys or worse. Better than those guys or worse. And so you don't get stuck looking at a blank sheet of paper. As an example, your hours of operation. Is it more convenient for the customer or less? Your website, does it rank higher in Google or lower? Your phone number, is the phone answered on the first ring or not? Your service, are your prices more or less? Your products, are they more or are they less? Your atmosphere in your your lobby, is it better or is it worse? Because if you don't know, you can't grow, you can't improve, you can't fix it. As an example, Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates, here here are his hours for his optometry clinics. Monday through Friday, 8.30 in the morning to 7 p.m. Jason, have you ever had your glasses break at the time of your choosing? Can't say that I have. And when you need to get new glasses, when do you typically want to go get those glasses? As soon as possible. What, whatever time's convenient for me. Do most people listening to this, to this show have a job? Yes. I would do, assume. Do you, do you think it's reasonable that most people would want to get their glasses repaired after work or before work? Is that, is that a reasonable idea, Paul? Is that, reasonable? I, that is an absolutely reasonable idea, Clay. Then why is he the only optometrist? It's so crazy. 8.30 in the morning... To 7 p.m. It's so crazy. I'll go in there, you know, 6 p.m. at night to get some glasses or 7. And it's amazing how many people will be sitting there in the lobby and I'll say, hey, do you come here often? They go, well, it's the only place open. Mm. I mean, 
There's a lot of repeat. What business. other choice do you have? <laughs> there's a lot of other. There's a lot of other great places, and they do a great job. But how many times does he get a customer simply because he's the only available option? Saturdays, eight thirty a.m. to six p.m. Come on. How many of you guys have ever tried to schedule an appointment with your family doctor or an optometrist on the weekend, and they tell you that they are closed? Chef, has this, has this ever happened to you? Yeah, tons of times. Uh, you know, doctors' offices. Uh, not, some of them aren't even open on Fridays. Mm. Right, come day. on, what's going on half here? Half a day on yeah. Friday. Hey, Clay, I got a great story yeah. for you. I've, I've, uh, my glasses. I've been getting a little headache, so I wanted to get my glasses checked, and and I called a place in uh, Bartlesville, and they said, yeah, we can get you in uh, in six months. Mm. Okay, they're gonna get me in six months to check my eyes. You might not even have eyeballs. I in might six not. Months. My goodness. Who knows? Uh, That's you know, With all the rushing. Are you being in, serious? I'm very serious. Six so, months. Six months. Uh, so I asked Z, I said, uh, you know, what on earth is that all about? And he said, come to our place. We'll get you in in six minutes. Yep. Boom. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, More I, convenient. I'm just pointing out this idea I, out there. But I, be, I bet you that you're waiting the six months, though. Nope. Oh, okay. I was wrong. I, that, that, no, I, to me, that's just, <laughs> why don't you just tell me? I'm not taking any more patients. I don't patients. like you. <laughs> I don't like you. I don't, the next I don't step, need any more business. The next step, my friends, we must mystery shop ourselves. Oh. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oof. So, the other day I went into the elephant in the room, Broken Arrow. We were serving hamburgers for the customers that day, Jason. And I went into the store, and I was sitting there um, with a guy who had just arrived to get his hair cut. He got there before me, so he grabbed a seat. I'm just standing next to him. And I said, hey. Uh, what's your name? He says, such and such. I said, so do you come here very often? He goes, oh, every month, man. I go, well, what do you like about it? And he sits there and tells me. And I said, well, if you were in charge, what could you, what could you do to improve? And he just says, well, you know, um, I like the place a lot. I mean, I think hot chocolate would be cool. <laughs> and what did we start doing this holiday season? Hot cocoa bar. There it mm. is. With marshmallows? Yeah, marshmallows. Oh, marshmallows, candy canes. Oh, oh baby. Nice. But, I mean, a customer brought up the idea. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily cost us more money to have hot chocolate than, than, than to serve our standard uh, coffee or Sprite or different beverage of choice. So we're just, it's just, you want to be aware of what customers think about your business. It is so important, which is why, uh, Jason, you know this, the elephant in the room, we have mystery shoppers. Oh, yeah. And can you kind of explain the dynamic of a mystery shopper when they come in to get their hair cut? Uh, they come in as if they're just a regular customer. They never tell us who they are. And yeah. then, um, do you know who they are? At this point, no. Honestly, yes. I knew I knew one at one point, but I have not seen him since I discovered his identity. So they're always <laughs> weird. Oh, weird. I just I, I will say this because I've had a ton of mystery shoppers throughout the past. You didn't kill that man, did you? Clay? <laughs> no, we 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 bring in mystery shoppers who are good people. And uh, they do a great job. And the only the only grievance I've ever had with our team about this is sometimes our team will say, "Guys, we're having a mystery shopper coming in an hour, so let's make sure we really mm-hmm. dial it in." It's so, a non non mystery shopper, <laughs> right? So the point of a mystery shopper is your team shouldn't know who they are. So therefore, you 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 can get a pulse on the business. That's it, one I was just about to bring that up. It's a way to hold your team accountable as well when you t- t- tell them that hey. There's mystery shoppers from here on out, then they never know. And why is it more effective to have a mystery shopper come in the store, Chup, and to come in and analyze what's going on than to have me personally show up and do it? Because everybody knows you. Right. And they act different around the boss, the manager, the owner. They're going to be on their A game. It's whenever your back is turned, whenever you're not in the store, whenever you're not in front of those people, what are they doing at that moment? That's what you need to know. And Clay, I tell you, back to the, or along that same line, um, you uh, encouraged us to install cameras. Oh, it works and so, so well. We have cameras so that we're mystery shopping all the time. We can look and see how people are. If, are they following our systems, our processes? Are they saying the right words? Are they asking for for Google reviews? Are they you know treating the people the way we want to be treated? So it's not only sending in a you know somebody who is actually an individual, but it's also monitoring uh, via these little cheap cameras. I mean, you can get these Nest cameras, and it's great. You can pull it up on your phone and look at any point in time. The the next uh, the next step here on mystery shopping and Paul Paul stole some some of my thunder here. I'm he stole sorry. some of the thunder. This is so uh, important. Uh. You want to install accountability systems. So I'm going to give you the big three. Call recording is huge. I don't know why anybody out there would not record your calls. I mean, if you want to run around acting like you're Amish and, re, and re, 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 kind of re, rebuke the technology, that's cool. But you're going to be killing yourself. The other, the other day, I was working with a, a doctor who had never, ever, ever listened to his recorded calls. And do you guys know what he found? I mean, can I take a wild guess? Yes. They weren't 
uh, following scripts, answering phones, doing anything that is supposed to be let done. Me, let me, I, w- I won't mention the name of the company, but I'll show it to you guys on the big screen so you yeah. guys can see little, or, or a little secret. But let me just show you what happens here. This will blow your mind. It'll, it, it will. It, this will make somebody out there in the healthcare industry, just your, your mind will explode. Here it is. You go to the site, and when you go there, it gives you an opportunity to schedule like your, your, your uh, appointment, right? Yeah. So you fill out this, this, uh, this p- section of the website, and when you do, then nothing happens. No one, no one calls you. <laughs> so then you call. This is this, I'm not kidding. This is how the call goes. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, thank you for calling Dr. Such and Such's office. How can I help you? Yeah, I wanted to schedule an appointment. And the person on the phone says, well, what you'll need to do is I go onto our website and fill out the form. Oh. And they go, no. well, I did. That's why I'm calling you. They said, oh, okay, well, we're probably just booked out. Not and th- he heard this on like every call. He's like, "Oh my gosh, there goes money." Oh my gosh, there goes money. Now here's where it gets crazier. Somebody calls in and says, "Hey, I'm wanting to c- I'm wanting to get my scripts, pick up my pain medication. My name is, and we'll just insert a first name like Cindy, but no last name." Front desk person says, "All right, come on by and pick it up. We'll have it waiting for you." Uh oh. <laughs> What <laughs> the hell is that going to happen? Now, think about this. Now, this is not uncommon. I've worked with many no, medical businesses. Yes. You'll say, uh, thank you for calling such and such medical. How can I help you? Yeah, my name's Doug, and I want to come get my prescriptions. Okay, great. And they don't even ask you your last name. And then you ask the doctor, you ask the person, is it possible that there are patients who are getting pain medication who don't need it? Is it possible? And then they'll say... You know, come to think about it, we should listen to our calls. And when they listen to their calls, they discover that this is happening. Chup, the jackassery. How, how can call recording fix the jackassery? Well, like you said, it's an accountability tool. And it's not only, um, yes, there is an element to letting your team know, hey, we're recording these calls now. But you actually need to block time out in your week to sit down with the team and listen to the calls collectively with the script in your hands. Uh, because nobody likes to be called out like that when they it's, it's obvious that you're not on script or you're not following the system. So you got to Record the calls, then you got to actually listen to those recorded calls. Yeah. Record the calls, clarityvoice.com. Record those calls. Two, install the video cameras. Like Paul said, install uh. the video cameras. Three, if you have guys in trucks, ladies in trucks, people driving around in the field, make sure that you put a GPS system on their vehicles. Put a GPS system on their vehicles. And the fourth accountability la- layer, call your customers and see if they are happy. Ask them. Call them up and say, hi, I'm calling on behalf of yada yada, and I wanted to see, were you happy with your service today? The other day, we had somebody deliver something to our offices, and I said to the person, how are you? They said, well, I'll be good as soon as I finish this delivery. It's my last delivery of the day, man. I'm going, okay. And you could tell they openly did not like their job. Inspires confidence in the customer, doesn't it? Right. And But that's not how the company normally works. Yeah. And the company does a very, very good job. But you could tell this was a new person who hadn't learned their culture yet or whatever. And again, I said, how are you? And they said, well, I'd be doing a lot better as soon as I finish this you know, delivery. And again, what it does is it, it kills the confidence. It kills the rapport. It makes the person feel like, the customer feel like that that uh, you're annoyed not to important. serve them. Yeah. You're, in, so again, you're inconveniencing them. Yeah. They're not there to serve you. You're there to just, you're just a, another stop. And it's just so inconvenient for them to be there for you. It's just not good. Not Paul, good, you've good worked with a lot of businesses over the years as, as a CPA. Yes. Why would anybody not take this mystery shopping? Uh, uh, not, why would someone not take this to heart? Why would somebody not implement the mystery shopping moves? Well, I think a lot of people don't do it is because they d- won't take the time to actually listen to the, the calls and watch the videos. And, and it's it's kind of like, again, we, we all love football, or at least most of us do. And it's it's kind of like after the game, you're not watching the game film to see who, who did what they were supposed to do and who needs to have work and how can you improve. Because the reality is, is most I say this about my own business, if I don't know it's broken, I can't fix it, Clay. And if you're not reviewing, if you're not listening to the recorded calls and watching video and, and having training sessions, sessions uh, you don't know it's broken. So there's no way you can fix it. There's a notable quotable here from Jim Ron, and it says, what you don't know will hurt you. Ooh, yes. That's exactly that's what Paul's exactly talking right. about. So if you're out there today and you're saying to yourself, gosh, I want to take my company to the next level this year. I have two action items or two action steps I would encourage you to take. One is mystery shop your business. Mystery shop your own company. Do it. Mystery shop the competitors. Listen to this podcast over and over again. Implement mystery shopping. And two, 
Schedule a one-on-one consultation with a member of the HoodCPAs.com team. Again, schedule a one-on-one consultation. It's a one-hour consultation with a member of the HoodCPAs.com team to do a financial deep dive so you can figure out where you are versus where you want to be. And to encourage you to do that, uh, Paul, you're giving all of the listeners a free copy of Warren Buffett's only authorized biography. The book is called Snowball. Yes, For anybody sir. out there who schedules a one-hour consultation, why would you give somebody such a great book, a, a tangible copy of a great book, and one hour of your team's time? Well, Clay, like I've said before, we I believe we were... Uh, we're born into the greatest country on this planet, and we don't teach people how to think outside the box. We teach people how to think like everybody else. And Warren Buffett, and really our CPA firm, our financial firm, is we try to teach people to think differently, to think deliberately, to be intentional with their success. And Warren Buffett is the greatest example financially, I think, of being intentional from the age of five on. He was very deliberate. Everything had a purpose and a reason every step he took. And I just I think it benefits people, and I'm willing to invest in them if they're willing to invest in themselves. You heard it from the man himself. Go to hoodcpas.com today. That's hoodcpas.com today. And schedule your free consultation. Get a free copy of Warren Buffett's only authorized by book, Snowball. Get it all today at hoodcpas.com. Uh, and, and just as, as we wrap up today's show, Paul, i got to get this out there. You are just looking tremendous today. Mm, thank you, sir. Chup, you smell as good as Paul looks. That is the best compliment I've ever had. And now, without any further ado, three, two, one, boom! 